What's up, gals and pals? It's your boy Vino, and welcome back to 60 Second Cocktails. Ladies and gentlemen, today is gonna be a really fun episode because we're gonna take a deep dive. I'm talking about head first into the king of tiki cocktails, the Mai Tai. That's right, folks, we're gonna do a little Mai Tai history. We're gonna make some Mai Tais. We're gonna drink some Mai Tais. It's just gonna be a Mai Tai kind of day. But I won't be doing it alone. I'll be joined by my buddy David from Cocktail Fridays. So make sure you stick around because we're gonna boogie down. All right, folks, so like I said, today we're gonna to take a deep dive into the Mai Tai, but look, I'll be the first one to admit when it comes to tiki cocktails, I am no authority. So I asked my buddy David of Cocktail Fridays to help me out a little bit, so he's gonna share with you guys a little Mai Tai history and even make a classic Mai Tai for you guys. So David, the floor is yours. Thank you, Vino, and welcome to Epic Moments in Tiki History. Today, we're going to be looking at one of the more controversial milestones in the Tiki lexicon, the history of the Mai Tai. Back in 1944, trader Vic Bergeron, <coughs> wait, what am I doing? This isn't me. Ah, yes, that's much better. Now, where were we? Right, 1944, right here in sunny California, up in Oakland, Trader Vic Bergeron, tiki enthusiast and restaurateur, was looking for a way to showcase his collection of 17-year-old J. Ray and nephew Jamaican rum. He experimented with building a cocktail that consisted of lime, orja, simple syrup, and orange curacao with the unique rum as its centerpiece. Now, as the legend goes, Trader Vic supposedly was serving this in-progress cocktail to some friends of his that he had visiting from Tahiti, and one of them liked it so much that they stood up and exclaimed, Mai Tai Ro Ai, which loosely translates to out of this world, the best. And so Trader Vic found the namesake for his signature cocktail, the Mai Tai, or the best. Now the popularity of this cocktail, combined with the franchising of Trader Vic's all over the country, eventually caused the 17 year Ray and Nephew rum to go extinct. So they had to switch to a 15 year Ray and Nephew rum, which then also went extinct, which then forced Trader Vic to come up with a new rum blend that would loosely mimic the flavor of that original rum, which consists of a Martinique and a dark Jamaican rum, which is still what Trader Vic's 44 Mai Tais are made with today. Until... So one of the few people in the whole world that actually own a super rare bottle of the original 17 year old J. Ray and Nephew Jamaican rum is Martin Kate, who runs the Rum Haven up in San Francisco, Smuggler's Cove. So Kate, along with Denison Rum Distillers, and using that original rare bottle as a reference point, created a new commercial rum that is meant to mimic the flavor of that long lost spirit, Denison Merchant Reserve's eight year rum. So for you, Vino, we're actually gonna make the Smuggler's Co. version of the 44 Classic, which in theory should closely mimic the intended flavor made by Trader Vic himself. Oh, there's the award ceremony music. I've been talking too long. That's Hollywood for you. Let's get started. All right, we're gonna start with three quarter ounce of fresh lime juice. So we're actually gonna cut up and squeeze some limes. Make sure to hold onto these for the garnish later. Toss that in. Half ounce of orange curacao. In our case, we're using Pierre Ferrand. This is the good stuff. Quarter ounce of orja syrup. In this case, we're using Liquid Alchemist. Quarter ounce of rich demerara syrup. Now, the original recipe, you usually see regular sugar syrup, but in this case, we're using this as it's probably closer to what Vic was actually using back in the day. And finally, two ounces of our star of the show, Denison Merchants Reserved Eight Year. Now, again, if you can't get your hands on this, you can also use equal parts dark Jamaican rum and Martinique rum. Oh, funky. All right, let's pour this into our shaker. Add a couple cubes to chill the drink as we shake it. For about 15 seconds. Also, it just sounds cool. Now we'll grab our glass, which we've had chilling like a villain in the freezer. Add some crushed ice. And now, strain it in. A nice amber color. Top it off a little bit. Now to give it that original Trader Vic flair, we're gonna add some mint and we'll slap it to open up the mint flavor a little bit. We'll stick that in the side. 
we'll put our lime in face down as we mentioned earlier add a straw and there we are 1944 smugglers cove trader vic mai tai let's give it a little sippy sip ah yes there it is super classic a really well-rounded cocktail you can tell why this was so popular and the smuggler's cove recipe really does deepen the flavor a little bit makes it a little bit more complex but i would like to think that this is exactly what it tasted like back in trader vicks in 44. thanks for letting me share the mai tai recipe and now back to you vino all right david thank you so much for that um briefish <laughs> history of the mai tai and a delicious looking classic Mai Tai, might I add. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put a link to David's channel, Cocktail Fridays, down in the description. If you guys are not subscribed, trust me, I tell you, it is well worth it. It is one of my favorite channels and David's just an overall good guy. Now, when it comes to the Mai Tai, a lot of people associate it with Hawaii. And I remember my first time in Hawaii, I had not had a Mai Tai yet. And so I said to myself, I am in the motherland of the Mai Tais. I have got to get one of these bad boys, right? So I order one and I'm sitting on the beach and there's the ocean breeze and the sun is shining. There's Hawaii music playing in the background. I'm thinking to myself, life could get no better than this. So when I get back to the Bronx, I say to myself, you know what, I've got to make myself some Mai Tais. I want to recapture that aloha spirit. So I start looking to some classic Mai Tai recipes and I find that none of them have pineapple juice. Now I find this very curious because in the motherland of the Mai Tai, Hawaii, all the Mai Tais have pineapple juice. So I do a little deep dive and I come to learn that the Mai Tai was not even invented in Hawaii. Now you gotta think about it, that blew my mind a little bit at the time. And so what happens is the Mai Tai doesn't even make it to Hawaii till 1953 when Trader Vic was hired by the Royal Hawaiian Hotel to make a cocktail list for their surf bar. And on that cocktail list was the original Mai Tai. But around the late 1960s, pineapple juice was added to the Mai Tai and it became the Royal Hawaiian Mai Tai. But over time, every bar in Hawaii started to use pineapple juice and it really kind of just became the Hawaiian Mai Tai. But what I'm gonna make for you guys today is the classic pineapple version of the Royal Hawaiian and then the way they make it today at the hotel. So let's start off with the classic Royal Hawaiian Let's check out what is in the sauce. All right, so the first thing you're gonna need is a half an ounce of lime juice. Next, you're gonna need a quarter ounce of lemon juice. Now you'll need one ounce of orange juice. Follow that up with one ounce of pineapple juice. Quarter ounce of simple syrup. Quarter ounce of orgeat. Quarter ounce of orange curacao one ounce of Demerara rum, one ounce of dark Jamaican rum, and one ounce of light Puerto Rican rum. Now we're gonna add ice to our shaker. And we're gonna shake that for about 10 to 15 seconds. Now you're gonna to wanna to serve that in a larger glass. So I'm gonna be using my little pineapple glass here. Now I'm gonna just do a dirty dump into the glass. And then I'm gonna fill the glass with some crushed ice. For garnish, I'm gonna use a mint sprig. And I'm also gonna throw in the lime wheel. And there you have it folks, our classic Royal Hawaiian Mai Tai. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put that cocktail to the side and now we're gonna look at what's in the sauce for the current version of the Royal Hawaiian Mai Tai. First thing you're gonna need is two ounces of pineapple juice. Next, one ounce of orange juice. Half an ounce of orgeat. Half an ounce of orange curacao. One ounce of light rum. Now we're gonna add ice to our shaker. We're gonna shake that for about 10 to 15 seconds. Now let's get our glass out and we'll be serving that in another pineapple glass. And once again, I'm gonna dirty dump that into my glass. I'm gonna to top it off with some crushed ice. And then I'm gonna flow one ounce of a black or very dark rum. For garnish, I'm gonna do two pineapple fronds, one dehydrated pineapple, and a cocktail cherry. 
And there you have it, folks, the modern day Royal Hawaiian Mai Tai. All right, so let's go ahead and give both of these bad boys a sippy sip, starting with the original classic recipe of the Royal Hawaiian Mai Tai. Oh, that is so good. That is absolutely delicious, folks. Oh, man. Mmm. Mmm. So, sorry, I usually don't do three sips before I talk about it. That is fantastic. I mean, you are really picking up all of the nuanced flavors of the cocktail and all the different ingredients. The rum really plays a really good role in the cocktail. It's not overshadowed by all the sweetness and the juices that are in it. It really, really works well. The juices really work to help balance it out to make it feel like a very tropical cocktail. They complement it very, very well. That is fantastic, All right, folks? Now let's go ahead and try the current version of the Royal Hawaiian Mai Tai. Cheers. Okay, see, so the, the current version is obviously a much more tourist friendly cocktail because you're not really picking up much spirits of the spirits at all. It's only got an ounce, two ounces and, and one of them's floating on the top. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, I guess I could go ahead and mix it up, but you know, you're not really getting much of the spirits here. This is a very, very juice friendly cocktail, um, juice forward cocktail. You know, I mean, I think that if, you know, I'm sitting on the beach, I wouldn't know any better. I would enjoy it because it's, you know, it's just, a, you're in the beach, you're in Hawaii, you're relaxing, right? But compared to this, it's just, it's not, it's day and night. It really is. Ah, oh. the, the, the classic version is a far superior cocktail by every possible metric. Anyway, folks, there you go. Our two Royal Hawaiian, my Hey, Vino, is there still time for me to mention my favorite Mai Tai riff? Oh, oh, yeah, sure, Dave. If you want to do another cocktail, go ahead. The floor is yours, pal. Thanks, pal. Now, if I'm being honest, this actually isn't my favorite Mai Tai riff, but it's so rich with history that I just couldn't resist. Now, back when we mentioned that Trader Vic created the Mai Tai up in Northern California, meanwhile, down here in Southern California, the other grandfather of Tiki, Don the Beachcomber, had a bone to pick with this. Trader Vic had been a regular at Don the Beachcomber since years before 1944, and so Don was now starting to claim that the famous Mai Tai was actually a riff on his original recipe from 1933, the QB Cooler. Now, it's questionable and frankly very unlikely that the Trader Vic Mai Tai is a copy of the QB Cooler, especially because the two recipes have virtually nothing in common. But nonetheless, Don the Beachcomber decided to strike back with his own version of the Mai Tai to capitalize on the cocktail's now ubiquitous fame. So the Don's Mai Tai truly is a unique cocktail all on its own, consisting of lime, grapefruit, Cointreau, Angostura bitters, Falernum, Pernod, and then dark Jamaican and gold Cuban rum. That combination of Pernod and grapefruit, along with swapping the syrup for Falernum, should make for a darker, bitter flavor. So we'll start again with a three quarter ounce of lime. We're gonna fresh squeeze another one. We'll keep these around and use it as a garnish in a slightly different way. One ounce of grapefruit, a quarter ounce of falernum, half ounce of Cointreau, six drops of Pernod, do a dash of Angostura bitters. It's a healthy dash. Do one and a half ounces of dark Jamaican rum. We're using Lost Spirits in this case. And finally, one ounce of gold Cuban rum. Now, if you wanted to make it totally legit, you would use something like Havana Club, but in this case, we're gonna swap in Bacardi Ocho. All right, let's pour this into our shaker. We'll add a couple ice cubes to chill the drink as we shake it. Shake for about 15 seconds. Also just sounds cool. All right, let's get our Mai Tai glass, which we had chilling like a villain. Add some crushed ice. Now, let's strain it in. Also a nice amber color. That's a big cocktail. Now for garnish, if you were having this at Don the Beachcombers in the 50s, there would usually be some fruit in there. So we're gonna stick some cherries on top and we're gonna 
cut this lime wheel and just kind of stick it on the edge of the glass there. Stick a straw in, and there we go. The 1950s Donda Beachcomber Mai Tai. Let's give it a sippy sip. Wow, it's just such a different cocktail from the 1944 Mai Tai. It's definitely darker and bitter as anticipated and even tastes a little bit more complex. For me personally, I'm a bigger fan of the 44 Mai Tai, but uh, for people who like darker, complex drinks, this one is for you. So there you go, a whole lot of different Mai Tais for you to make at home. Thanks so much Vino for inviting me, and thank you all for joining us on this Tiki History Adventure. Back to you Vino. Well, Dave, thanks so much for that bonus Mai Tai, man. I think my audience will greatly appreciate that. <laughs> anyway, folks, like I said, if you're not subscribed to Dave, I'll put a link down in the description. Make sure you go ahead and subscribe. Guy's got a great channel, all right? Well, that's all we got for you, folks. If you like this video, please press like, please subscribe, and please share with your family and friends. Remember, sharing is caring, and when life gives you lemons, make yourself a cocktail. Aloha.